Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this Photoshop Elements video, we'll be doing a quick sky fix on this, replacing this background here with a much better looking one. Let's just show you this real fast here. There we go. So we'll be going from this to this. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button, and of course, share with your friends through social media. Just click on that share button. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, actually learn the whole program from beginning to end, take a look at my complete training course. And there's a link right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. We'll start this fast sky fix project just by closing this down. I'm not going to bother saving that one. Get that out of the way. And we'll open up the two files I use. First one is right here. And then here's the second one right there. So it's just a regular nice picture and then a nice cloud shot. Choose open. Now both of these images are available for download. You'll find a link for both of those on my download page. And you'll find that of course right down there in the description. So here's our two pictures. Our main picture right here and this picture. Now to, to do this easily you want to have the, your window set up here for floating windows. Let me show you that real fast. Go up to edit, come down to preferences and general. And then right here on the general tab, allow floating documents in expert mode. Make sure that's checked and also enable floating document window docking. With those two checked, you can then easily work with your windows just by docking it like that or pulling it off and floating it. For a background image, it can be docked, but it's nice having the sky here floating so you can do this one quick trick. Just grab the background layer and drag it onto your other picture. And there we go, we've copied that layer into that file. Real easy to do when you have your windows set up floating. Now the first thing we have here, first thing we'll do is we'll get this set up properly. I'm just gonna let this kind of snap into position there. See how it's just kind of snapping right to the sides? Now the size is already the same width, it's just a little bit shorter. To get that snap, take a look under view and make sure that snap to and that these are all checking. We're actually stepping to our document bounds right down there. So make sure that those are selected. Next thing, let's get this basically sized right. Now this is looking up into the sky a little bit higher than our other picture in here. This is a much lower view. So I want to fix the perspective just a little bit. And it's easy to do here. I'm just going to grab the bottom of this cloud picture, pull that up. Let's find where the horizon is and pull it down just below the horizon right there. It just kind of shrinks or collapses the clouds just a little bit vertically. And that helps get our perspective to match. Okay, so our clouds are now in place. Let's now come down to the background layer here. Take this background layer, drag it up here to the new layer button, making a copy, and pull that above the cloud layer. Next we'll make a selection in here of the sky, and we'll do that using the magic wand. There we are. Now I have my tolerance set down here at 32. This is the default setting. And in most cases, this works out pretty good. I'm going to leave this right at the default on this video. Notice also that contiguous is selected. That means that everything has to be touching. It won't be getting anything which is not touching, like the water right here, which is pretty close. We don't want to have that selected. And I have it set up as a new selection right there. So basically, that's just the default settings. Click into the sky someplace, kind of in the mid-range in here. And let's see how we do. Looks good. I actually grabbed the whole sky real nicely, came in, got the whole figure very nicely. This is pretty easy in most cases on sky images if it's a clean sky without any clouds in it because it's all pretty consistent on the coloration in there. So the magic wand works out very well for this. We now need to invert this selection because I want everything else selected and not the sky. Go up to select and inverse. And there we go. There's a little bit right up here. You can see that upper right hand corner. We can lose that as part of our selection. I can lose that from the selection. Come down here to this right here, subtract from selection. And let's switch over to just the standard lasso. And double check your setting here. Make sure it's on subtract right there. And then just pull a lasso right around that bit. And it will take that out of your selection. And there we go. Now I'm in the habit of always going back to the move tool up here. Just a, it's a good habit to be in. Let's go back to the move tool. 
Now to get the other sky or clouds showing, all we have to do at this point is click on the layer mask button right here. And then Photoshop Elements automatically converts that selection into a layer mask hiding the part that we didn't have selected. And there we go, there's the sky behind the girl. Now it's not a good match yet. We'll need to do just a couple of things to make this even better. It's just a bit too bright. It doesn't really match the coloration here. We need to blend this in with our background image here. So let's come down to our sky layer. You can now go up here to our blend modes, click on this, and then if you use the wheel on your mouse, you can actually scroll down through these things, just like this, and get all kinds of different blend modes. You can go ahead and just kind of scroll down, find one that you like, and then use that. And the one I'm using on this one is a bit further down here. It's hard light right there. But there are two that work frequently well. Overlay works well frequently, and so does hard light. Hardly gives you a little bit more contrast possibly. So that's the first part is just to blend this in. What that does is it blends the colors in here into the colors in behind and helps get a better color match. It's still too bright though. So let's tone this down a little bit. Go up here to the opacity and I'll bring it down, oh, in the high 60 range, you know, about two thirds of the way up. I just clicked in there, but that's about right. Anywhere around in here, about two thirds of the way up is good that again blends our colors in a bit better with our original colors which makes the colors a better match with the girl in the foreground and our last little trick in here I want to get more of an atmospheric effect in here where it gets more blended into the background down below and less towards the top we can do that with a layer mask on this layer so let's click on layer mask come down to your colors make sure they're at the defaults foreground black and background white. If it looks like this, just click that little double arrow right there. There's your foreground background. If it's different colors, just click on the little thing right there to get your defaults and then invert with that button right there. Come up to the gradient tool. It should automatically be showing you the foreground to the background, which in this case should be black to white. Everything else will be at their defaults, 100% normal. First one here is linear and then come right down below the horizon. Click and hold the shift key down and pull straight up about halfway into the sky, just like that. And what that does is it blends in, again, the sky into the background image. So it actually uses the sky as an overlay on this image down below here. And as it gets into the layer mask, this hides the image more and more as it comes down into the black area and blends in with our existing sky so at our sky at the very bottom now, this is the original sky, and then it blends into our new sky with our clouds. And there we go. That's all there is to it. Just a few quick steps. We can see this. If you click on the layer mask over here, look for your light blue outline. Right click. You can disable the layer mask. There's the original. Right click again and enable, and there's our new sky fix. Let's just take a look at this real fast in here. I'll zoom this in. And a couple of clicks, there we go. And a real nice match in here for our new sky with this nice, more interesting cloud background. Now, the few problems that you may have when you're doing this, you may not get a really good selection around your image. It depends upon your picture. And this was a nice, clean one, real clean background in there. It's worked out very, very well. So you might need to come in and do a little bit of adjusting when you're using your magic wand and just play their tolerance a little bit down here. If you're not getting enough of the sky, if it's you know kind of kind of coming away from your image here in different spots, try raising up your tolerance level a little bit to get more of the sky. Now, if you're getting too much, if you're beginning to get into your subject, into your background a bit in here, try lowering down your tolerance a little bit. So you can only really play with that a little bit to get just the right level. But I found that 32 is a really good standard number to start off with to see how it works. Okay, so there you go. That's a fast sky fix in here using just a little cloud overlay and some layer mask. Don't forget to hit that like button and also share with your friends through social media. Also, don't forget you can get my complete training course right down there is the link in the description. In my complete training, I don't just show you quick tricks like this, but I show you how to use every single tool in the program, all the options, everything down here, every single one of the panels on the right hand side, everything inside of all the menus. I show you the whole complete program, how everything works. It's really the best way to learn how to use Photoshop Elements. 
and then use my YouTube projects to practice what you've learned. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.